Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure uh, for me to be here and to share with you my ideas or my side and perspective about uh, Presbia, uh, the microlens inlay. You've been informed already uh, over a lot of things concerning Presbyopia, and uh, I would like to give you my personal uh, perspective, how I got involved with this company. I'm not a founder or CEO of the company. I'm a member of the board of directors since uh, almost two years now. And uh, by nature, I'm an ophthalmic surgeon and actually a very busy high volume surgeon. And I also held an academic position as a chairman of the eye clinic in Heidelberg and do a lot of research. As a matter of fact, a couple of the devices that you've seen here over the uh, morning here, I've, I have been involved in studies. So I'm very interested in uh, innovative new products. And I'd like to go with you through my ideas or perspectives on this. So I have two perspectives. The third perspective would be being a patient, but I can't really give you that perspective, maybe next year, but uh, this is uh, the topic. Um, Presbyopia, as you know, is, is one of the biggest markets here, but uh, we, have, we have to be sure that we don't get carried away with it. Of course, everybody at a certain time gets presbyopic, so we potentially have six billion people in the world who will get uh, presbyopia, uh, uh, you know, in a way. But uh, this is not uh, that we can treat every patient. However, there's a lot of patients that we can treat, and not only the so-called native presbyopic, as, as I call them, but also patients that have undergone LASIK procedures or other procedures and are now approaching the presbyopic age. This is a very interesting group because they are very much related to any kind of corneal laser procedure uh, in terms to fix their deficiencies, so like the presbyopic stuff. We have cataract patients that have undergone the surgery but have gone a monofocal lens. 95% of the cataract market still is monofocal lenses. Yeah, even though most talks are about multifocals, monofocals is a standard implantation. So they are also very good candidates. With the Presbia inlay, it's a micro lens, an intraocular lens more or less, you have to use a laser in order to put the lens in the place in the cornea. And a lot of Doctors have invested quite a bit of money uh, to buy femtosecond lasers, and they, of course, want to use them. I actually have four femtosecond lasers, and we get them running pretty well, actually, and this is one of the procedures we are doing with it. It is an intraocular lens, and as a surgeon or as a doctor, I can tell you I can much better relate to a product which is familiar to me. A lens which has some dioptric power, I can understand what two and a half diopter near addition means for me. So it's very easy to sell to an ophthalmologist what this device is doing. This device has a central zone, which is for the distance. It has more or less no power. It's a, it's a hole in there and a transition zone and a peripheral zone where they have the near edge. And this is pretty simple and it's quite uh, similar actually to a multifocal lens. Something as you have seen in the very first poll, uh, most of you think is very interesting in the future. You can see the details here. It's a hydrophilic acrylic material. It's a very tiny, very slim uh, implant, and you see the actual size here on this slide. As I said, the center is for the distance and the other for the near, and with this you can see quite well, actually, and it is approached in the non-dominant eye in order to have a kind of monovision approach. With the femtosecond laser, you create a pocket. So this is quite similar to the SMILE technology that, that you've heard of, also is, is quite interesting at the moment. And uh, the only difference is you don't put tissue out, you put tissue in, so to say, you put an implant in. So these are the first patients. I was the first certified surgeon for this in, in Germany. And these are four patients with uh, day one, actually. And uh, even if you are not an expert, uh, you see that it looks pretty normal in a way. And I had to put these red dots in there in order to show you where approximately the lens is because you can't hardly see it. From the outside, you can hardly see it. And even on day one, where normally the cornea is a little bit odd, you can see here it looks quite, uh, quite safe. In order to get it in there, you have to put uh, the patient under a femtosecond laser and you have to apply this laser. You see here, this is a, a scene where you, the laser is creating the pocket, as I said, and this is like a 10 second uh, procedure and then the lens is put in this pocket, very similar to the devices, uh, to the SMILE procedure. The data I have seen with my patients are very good. As you can see here, this is a uncorrected near visual acuity on this eye. And you see zero LOCMA means 2020. 
So even on day one, uh, on average, my patients had already 20, 25. Uh, so they were very excited. And what uh, the other lady said about the uh, word mouse-by-mouse uh, mouse propaganda, I can see here because this first patient, he brought me five to 10 patients directly in the first week after they heard how it came out. Distance security, if you look with both eyes, is not compromised. Actually, it's quite good because you can also see through this lens and the near uh, vision is an addition to that. So altogether, we can say that with the Presbyter microlens inlay, we have a, have a very interesting device a doctor can relate to, he can apply his uh, femtosecond laser technology to. We have learned with Presbya quite a bit from the in and outs of the, the other companies, like you've heard, AccuFocus and Revision Optics, what worked, what didn't work. So Presbya is the third on the market, but can take advantage actually of this knowledge in order to create a good market for, for its product. I like very much the very controlled release they are doing now. The FDA trials are uh, this year, the uh, two year uh, follow up will be done. So they are also uh, finalizing quite soon. And they do a very controlled release in two countries in order to uh, look how the market can be built up. And this is the reason why I joined this uh, company. And I think there's a lot of potential in this kind of advice. Thank you very much. Thank you.